All right, you have now entered the training zone to become a Google master. So everybody knows how to use Google. Well, kind of. Everybody just starts typing in, you know, how to, you know, do a math problem with exponents, something like that. You know, and it gives you all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, but there are all these little tools that Google has kind of hidden that you got to kind of know about that we're going to talk about today. So the first one that we're going to talk about is called the phrase search. So if I type in, I remember I had this like article that I was reading the other day about 11 battery tips for the iPad. So I'm going to type in 11 battery tips. And see this first result I'm like well that's not the one I wanted so I want to make sure it wants to search for it exactly as I put it as I put 11 battery tips and I'm going to put these quotation marks around it okay so putting these quotation marks around it forces Google to say I want you to search for this exactly in this order so I'm going to search for that and then I get my 11 battery tips for your iPhone Okay, and this can be used a lot of ways. If you're ever searching for something, you're just like, that's not what I'm looking for. If it's a bunch of words, you'll want to put quotation marks around the words that you want it to go in an exact same order. Okay, number two is called a site search. Okay, so say that I'm looking for something specific at Belton Middle School, South Belton Middle School. Um, so let's say I'm going to type in the word site and I put the colon, the two dots, site, colon. And I want it to search at the BISD page. So I'm going to type www.bisd.net. And then I want to search South Belton, because I know it's probably in there. And maybe I'm looking for the theater arts department. OK. And so I'm going to hit Enter. And it searched right in the BISD. You can see it right there, BISD and found South Belton Theater Arts. And so that'll take me straight to the Theater Arts page. So site is very, very cool. So let's go over that again. You're just gonna type in site, S-I-T-E, and the colon button, and then whatever site you're searching for. So if you wanna search at BISD, that's great. If you're searching something else, if you're on CNN, or if you're looking at something like, um, New York Times, whatever, you can just type that in for site and it'll search only that site for what you're looking for. Very handy if you know that it's something that, on that site but you don't know where to find it. Next one is file type. So say that I'm looking for the periodic table of elements. Periodic table elements. Okay, I get all these really cool websites about the period periodic table of elements. But I want a PDF for my iPad. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add in the word file type colon. Okay, so I'm going to search file type F-I-L-E-T-Y-P-E -E colon and then there's periodic table of elements. And I hit enter. Oh, sorry. Not hitting enter. I'm getting ahead of myself. File type. Well, what do I want? I want to search for the PDF. Then a space. Okay. So I'm telling this now that I want to search for file type PDF. Okay. So I'm looking for PDF. And this is telling me what I'm looking for within that PDF. So hit enter. And then every one of these is a periodic table of elements in PDF form. You can just go in there and hit open in Adobe Reader or, you know, you can save it by holding on it. Very cool, very, very cool feature right there. All right, next one is ignoring a search. So say I want to search for great poets. Okay, well, I get a bunch of great poet ones, both, but probably wonderful poets, but I've read some poetry and I just really don't like the work of. Dylan Thomas. So I don't want to see anything with Dylan Thomas in it. So I'm going to say great poets, great. And then I'm hit minus. And I'm going to type in Dylan Thomas. 
Now, because this space is right here in between it, it's actually going to say Great Poets, and it's going to say you don't want to hear about Dylan, but you want to hear about Thomas. So what should I really do? Mmm, I heard somebody. Not really, because I can't hear. Okay, so I have to put these in parentheses, because I want to tell it that I want to minus out the whole thing for Dylan Thomas. Okay, so I want Great Poets and nothing with Dylan Thomas in it. Okay, so we got to use those parentheses from earlier. Hit that, and then I get a whole another set of results that doesn't have Dylan Thomas in it. Okay, really neat feature as well. Okay, oops, I don't want to do that. All right, then the next one is called a date range. So if you want to search between specific dates, you can do that. So if I just typed in, like, I want to know about some battles, let's type in battles, and I get all kinds of stuff. Battles, band, Wikipedia, free music, Facebook pages. It's not really helping me. Okay, but say I want to hear about battles from a certain time period. So I can hit 1700, and then you hit period, the period twice, two periods. And then I'm going to say to 1800. And it'll search for any time that sees battles on the internet with the dates 1700 to 1800. So I hit enter, and I get all these, 1757, 1759, 1798, 1777, and you can change these dates around any way you want to. Anytime you're searching for a date range of something, just type in the two dots there in the middle, two periods. All right, next one. Um, you can still do a date range without putting something on the end. So say that I want to search for something about um, economic economic inflation. And I get all these results here. Okay? Say I want inflation from a specific date. So I can go, let's see, let's see, 1920. And then I'm going to hit two dots. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And so then I get all these that search for 1920 and later. So it's excluding everything that happened, that all these articles, any articles that refer to it before 1920. All right, two more. Y'all are hanging in there. Next one is conversions. So let's say that I want to search, that I want to figure out, let's see, I got five gallons of water, okay? And I want to convert that to, let's go to quartz. And hit enter, and it'll actually give you a converter right here. You can change it. You can do different things like temperature and length and mass and fuel consumption. And we got gallons, we can change that. I got quarts, you can change that. Or you can just get the answer. I said five gallons to quarts, and I got that five gallons equals 20 quarts. Pretty cool. And the last one is the definition function. So if I want to find something, okay, um, like if I just type in the word exponent, I get a call a lot of results, and I can read all that, which is fine. But say I just want a definition, I want something easier to find. So I'm going to come in front of this, and I'm going to hit define, and I'm going to hit the little colon, the two dots, and then hit enter. And then I get this pop-up bar, I get this pop-up box that has the definition in it. Click on that arrow, you get origins, you get the use over time for how much that word is used. You get all these kinds of different uh, synonyms that you can click on and see what the meanings of those are. So also really fun. There's a lot of more Google searches, but these are the ones that really, really help you. So let's let's recap. You got the quotation marks to search for a phrase. You've got site search, site colon. You've got file type, where you search for like PDFs or pictures, file type colon. If you want to ignore something in a search, just use the minus sign. If you want to search for a range of dates, hit the two dots. If you want to search for anything after dates, hit the two dots and just leave it blank. And then uh, conversions, just type in what you want to convert to. And define is define with the two colons. So good luck. And remember, with great power comes great responsibility.